Well, hello again. Welcome to Employment Hour in 30. John Scholes, Lior Sanfiru. We are ready to tackle your employment rights and your boss. Not physically, but as you know, through the employment side of things, we'll, we'll set you straight and fill your head full of useful information over the next uh, 30 minutes to go. You'll want to reach out anytime. 1 855 821 5900 is a good place to start. We'll give you details on how you can catch our weekly radio show and be taking phone calls from that show in just a wee bit. Uh, first of all, the week that was, pal, how are you? It's, uh, it's been a great, great Good. week, actually. A lot, of, a lot of people calling and, you know, complimenting the show, saying, well, I finally feel a bit empowered in the workplace. I understand my rights now better. That's exactly why this is about. It's not even about solving problems. It's about arming people with knowledge. Knowledge is always a good thing. If you have knowledge about your workplace rights, you can fight for yourself if you need to. You can stand up for yourself if you need to. You can solve problems if you ever come across these problems. You can't do that if you don't have the knowledge. So this show is always about informing people, giving you that knowledge you need to know if you're working. Full-time, part-time, on contract, whatever it is, the law is quite good in protecting employees. The law is quite good in providing you with rights. But the law can't help you unless you understand what it is. So we're going to talk about that on this show, on every show, about your workplace rights. And the week that was, John, I mm. always like to start off with the case that came across my desk. And I think this one is a, is a great example on how the law can help you if you understand it. Uh, I spoke with a lady that for 15 years, John, has worked the same job, same schedule, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, pretty much. Consistently. Consistently, year in, year out, always. No problem. Except very recently, a couple weeks ago, she was told by her boss that from now on, moving forward, we need you to work every other Saturday, moving forward. Well, obviously, you're rolling your eyes. I would as well. You know, most people have other plans on Saturdays. She actually had a part-time job on the weekend. She didn't want to have to leave that part-time job. She never worked weekends, so she was concerned about it. She told her boss, well, no, I don't really want to do it. Well, her boss said, well, let's look at your employment agreement that you signed 15 years ago. In that employment agreement, it says that you may have to work weekends. So all we're doing is we're making you work in accordance with your employment yep. agreement. Well, that's when she called me and she wanted to know, is that right? Can they make me and what rights do I have? So here's the thing. This is actually quite interesting. Even though when she started working, she signed an agreement giving the company the ability to make her work weekends. Over 15 years, a new reality was created. The reality in which she does not work weekends. She only works Monday to Friday. A new term was established. They've essentially given up, the company did, the ability to make her work weekends. So now her reality is she only works Monday to Friday, which means her employer, John, cannot change the terms of her employment. They cannot do that. So what I told her to do is very simple. I said, tell them, no, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. Don't want to do it. If they insist, if they implement that anyway, you can treat that as a constructive dismissal. You can leave and force them to pay you severance. Remember, constructive dismissal happens whenever your employer changes the terms of your employment in such a significant way that you can walk away from it. You don't have to accept it. You can leave and make the company pay you your severance. Now, this is very interesting because this is a constructive dismissal, John, even though she signed an agreement saying you'll work weekends. Right. Over time, over a period of time, her employer changed that reality. They allowed her to work exclusively during the week. So, John, now they can't go back and pretend that now they have the right to make her work weekends. Fifteen years is a long time, but what, what's the standard or is there a standard, you know, expiration date on when something, even in a contract, isn't worth the paper it's written on because of the yeah. reality? If for, let's say, a couple of years you, you act in a different way than what the contract says, you can go back to the contract. So a couple of years usually, if you, you create a new term, a new reality, and in this situation, 15 years, right. Monday to Friday, whatever she signed 15 years ago is not going to matter. It's a significant change to the terms of employment. It's a constructive dismissal. EmploymentHourTV.ca is the place to go to find our radio show that we do every week. We take phone calls, of course, on the show. It is live, and we play them back on this show, and we, uh, we talk about them. First call of the day is coming right now. I just got laid off today, and I'd like to know how much severance I'm owed. Uh, 17 years, filing clerk, 47. What have they offered you? Uh, six weeks. They, they give you advance notice of your termination? Nope, but they, I just walked into the office today, and they laid me off. Yeah, no. Uh, no, no. I, it's wrong on so many levels. This is an actual call we got recently on one of our radio shows. And this is, even though this is a call from a radio show, I get calls like this every day, usually multiple times a day, People have been let go, been offered something, they want to know what it is, uh, and, and probably a lot of what we do, a lot of our time is spent helping people that lost their jobs, number one, understanding what they're owed, yep. 
and number two, help them get what they're owed. So let's talk about this specific situation. She's been let go after 17 years and was offered six weeks pay. You know what? Uh, the, the, the term I would use here is ridiculous. This is not even close to being correct. She's owed much more. Remember, the main factors that go in assessing how much you're owed are your age, your position, and the length of your employment. The longer you work, the older you are, and the more senior a position, the more severance is owed to you. So let's take this and apply it to her. But rather than just me tell you sure. how much she's owed, let's actually plug her information into the severancepaycalculator.com website so that everyone can see that. Again, severancepaycalculator.com. So she's a filing clerk working for 17 years. She's 47 years old and she was given, very generously, six weeks pay. Well, if you, as you see on the screen, Severance Calculator correctly assesses her as being owed about 16 months pay. 16 wow. months. A month and a half to 16 months. Yeah, so that's 14 and a half month difference. <laughs> now, I don't know what her salary is. I don't know if she's making 30,000 or 100,000, but either way, that difference, is significant yeah. that's a lot of money and that this is we, we chose this call not because it's unique or unusual or particularly uh, novel we chose it because it's a common situation if you've been let go chances are just like in this situation you're owed a lot more than what you're owed call me email me go to severancepaycalculator.com make sure you don't walk away from what you're owed phone call simple 1-855-821-5900 and employmenthourtv.ca that is the place to go to catch our radio show call number two of the day is coming up now my sister has been working uh, for about 12 years for um, a dental agency and about five six years ago her uh, employer had provided one of those uh, agreements that you were just talking about and said nobody gets an increase unless they sign these agreements. Now she's refused to sign the agreement every year and she hasn't had an increase in six years. And I wonder if there's any recourse for that. Yeah, no, I, I actually remember this, uh, this qu call we got on yeah. our show uh, quite well. So here's the thing, let's talk about raises and pay increases. Legally speaking, a company is not required to provide a pay raise. Now, most companies do provide some raise because there's cost of living sure. that increases and you know it's a way to keep employees engaged and happy and dedicated by providing a pay raise. It's a normal thing to do. Legally speaking, a company doesn't have to. Beyond so minimum wage. That's beyond all minimum to do. wage. Right. Now, if you have a contract that says you'll get a raise, they have to comply with it. But as long as you're paid minimum wage or more, of course, the company doesn't have to give you a raise. Therefore, John, company can decide when to give raise and in what circumstances. They may say, to give you a raise, you have to sign this agreement. Okay, they can do that. But the real question is, what are you giving up yeah. by signing that agreement? So if by signing that agreement, you're giving up $50,000 in future severance for that $1 pay raise, well, that's a pretty bad bargain. There's only one reason, John, an employer is going to ask you to sign an agreement. It's not because they need your name on a piece of paper. They're going to ask you to sign an agreement because it provides for better terms for the employer. So what I would say to this person is this. Let me see that agreement. Let me see what they want you to agree to. Because if it is a bad agreement, if it's an agreement that's going to cost you money, you're better off not signing it even if you don't get a pay raise. If it's going to cost you $50,000, $100,000 later on, do you really care about that extra $1 an hour? Probably not. Now, if it turns out that that agreement is completely innocuous and not problematic, by all means, you should sign it. But never, ever sign an employment agreement after you started working for whatever reason, whether it's a promotion, a pay raise, don't sign one without me seeing it. Oftentimes, there are going to be problematic terms there that if you're not aware of them, if you just sign them without getting proper advice, could cost you a lot of money down the road. It could give the company the power to change your job, to change your compensation, to demote you, to lay you off temporarily, yeah. to pay you almost no severance. Very important to get that advice and whenever you're offered an employment agreement. And you're not obligated to sign it. You're not obligated. You cannot be punished for not signing it. Right. You cannot be punished for saying, no, I'm good with what I have. I don't want to sign that employment agreement. If you're ever punished, that is wrong. You need to call me. But no, legally, you cannot be punished. Help at employmentlawyer.ca is a way to reach out through email. Want to get into our topic for the day as well. This is a good one. Everything you need to know about the old Ministry of Labor. So we'll get to these and, uh, and talk about them. Number one is the Ministry of Labor misleading people when it comes to their employment rights. I'm just going to lob that one over the plate for yeah, you. Yeah, you're going to lob it. And, and for a lot of people, this is going to sound silly or ridiculous. But when it comes to your termination entitlements, we're talking about the Ministry of Labor in the context of get, giving you advice when you lose your job. Yes. The Ministry of Labor misleads people every day, multiple times a day with respect to entitlements. And here's why. 
the Ministry of Labor can only tell you, no, not that they can only tell you, they only, uh, they refuse to tell you anything but yeah. your minimum entitlements. So the Ministry of Labor will only tell you about your minimum termination entitlements. Now, the reason that's a problem is because that is only a small fraction of what you're actually owed. So if you call the Ministry of Labor, you'll find out about a portion of what you're owed, not your full entitlements. And if you don't know any better, you're going to walk away from significant amounts. So the Ministry of Labor, unfortunately, not on purpose, misleads people every single day. And every single day, John, I speak with people that have walked away from entitlements because they got the wrong advice from the Ministry of Labor. So bottom line, when it comes to losing your job, you cannot go to the Ministry of Labor. You can go to severancepaycalculator.com. You can call me. You can call another employment lawyer if you don't like me. Not a problem. You cannot go to the Ministry of Labor. What's another example of bad advice you could get from them? <laughs> well, let me give you a common situation, just something that uh, came across my desk uh, over the past week or so. I uh, spoke with a gentleman that had worked for a company for over 12 years, small company, and was let go because the company was not doing well. They were, they were uh, reducing their headcount. And he called the Ministry of Labor asking them, what am I owed? They, he was told eight weeks pay. Now, this company had offered him 12 weeks pay. So he thought, okay, I guess that's oh, fine. Nice. I, I, I mean, I, I thought it may be more, but if the Ministry of Labor is telling me eight weeks pay, they've offered me 12 weeks, I'm going to accept it. Well, the reason why he called me is because he heard our show, our, on our radio show. He heard the show, so he called me at the office. And I said, no, sir, you're actually owed a 12 months pay. You got the wrong advice from the Ministry of Labor. Now, his minimum entitlements were eight weeks pay. His full entitlements were 12 months pay. And those are his legal entitlements that he can enforce. So he got the wrong advice terrible situation. I had to break the bad news to him. Yeah. Again, this is your government. Again, this is not conservative versus liberal. This is not a political statement. It's just the way it works. It's been through that for many years, through many governments. Unfortunately, you get the wrong advice from the Ministry of Labor if you lose your job. Talking about all of the things that you need to know about the Ministry of Labor, number three point is, where do the people go instead? They think, Ministry of Labor, it's my job. The two connect. That's where I should go. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And they give you a 1-800 number to call. Right. Hey, it's free. So bottom line is, as I said, and you, by now you hopefully understand, you cannot go to the Ministry of Labor if you lost your job. You go to severancepaycalculator.com. You speak with an employment lawyer like myself or another employment lawyer. Like I said, you don't want to talk to me, not, not a problem. That is it. You don't speak with your, with your Uncle Bob that was let go 20 years ago or your Aunt Mary that used to own a business. You, go, you don't go to the Ministry of Labor, severancepaycalculator.com, probably the easiest place to go to, John. Someone does get bad advice from the Ministry of Labor, which in this case is pretty common when it comes to your severance. Uh, what do they do? What's the you know, it's, 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 if you can prove in a way that, that the Ministry of Labor gave you bad advice, you may be able to take legal action for negligence against the Ministry of Labor. I've done that before uh, and, and uh, resolve those matters. It's not ideal. If you did get bad advice from the Ministry of Labor, let's talk about it. Give me a call. But the bottom line is you don't want to be in that situation. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen to your friends. If they've been let go, tell them, put that phone down. down. Don't call the Ministry of Labor. Go to severancepaycalculator.com instead. Speak to me. Make sure you, you get a full picture of your full entitlements. If someone does go to the extent we're opening up a file with the Ministry of Labor, is there pitfalls of doing that? Is there going back? Is it... It gets worse. So not only do you get the wrong advice, if you actually file a claim with the Ministry of right. Labor for your termination entitlements, unless you withdraw that within two weeks, you're stuck. You've given up your rights. You can't take it back. And now you're limited to trying to enforce only your minimum entitlements. Oh. So, yes, believe it or not, it gets worse. Big time. We'll get to our last point here. Uh, in what cases should somebody call the Ministry of Labor? They're there for a reason, right? Absolutely. So we've established you cannot, under any circumstances, go to the Ministry of Labor if you lost your job. Where, when, uh, when can you go? If you have an overtime issue, a vacation pay issue, a minimum wage uh, issue, absolutely, statutory holiday pay, not a problem. If you're owed wages, your company didn't pay you properly for last week work, by all means, you can and you should go to the Ministry of Labor. I'll, I'll refer you there myself. Simply not when it comes to termination of employment. You also can't go there with constructive dismissal issues. You have to, for that, get proper legal advice. How severance works when the company is sold, we will get to that after a short break. Stick around for it. 1 855 821 5900 is the number. It's Employment Armor 30. Be right back. You lost your job. They only gave you two weeks of severance per year worked. But where can you find out what you're really owed? I'm going to severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you're owed right now. Severancepaycalculator.com. Insurance companies deny long-term disability claims all the time. They give lots of excuses. Don't give up. I've seen it all. 
They've ignored your doctors, they've ignored you. You're angry and you're frustrated, but there's hope. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savan and his team, 1-855-821-5900, or go to inyourcorner.ca. You lost your job. They said they had a good reason, but you think you've been wrongfully dismissed. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back, Employment Hour and 30. John Scholes, Leora Sanfiru, talking about your employment rights every week on the show. And we've mentioned it, we've used it already. Mystery labor, not good for severance, but severance pay calculator, on the other hand, Mon Frere is the place you want to go, right? It, it is Mon Ami. Yeah. Uh, it's easy, it's free, it's quick. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Again, SeverancePayCalculator.com. The very first place you go to, if uh, you had that unfortunate meeting with HR, they've handed you your walking papers, and you want to know, as you should, what are you owed? Yep. Well, you go to severancepaycalculator.com, you answer the questions there about your age, your position, the length of your employment. You don't have to think too hard about it. It's just a drop-down menu. And when you're done, it's gonna tell you how many months pay you are actually owed. Not what the company offered you, not what the minimum entitlements are, what your full entitlements are. It works easy, it's free, you can't pay for it. If you try to pay for it, don't try to pay for it, it's free. <laughs> Once you go there, uh, that's all you need. And even if you haven't lost your job, even if you're worried about it, the company's going through some restructuring, there are rumors that uh, maybe you'll, uh, your, your job is going to be affected, well, be prepared. Have that information. Don't be surprised. Go to severancepaycalculator.com. And the reason we created it, John, is because it's not a week's pay per year of service or two weeks' pay per year of service or even a month's pay per year of service. You don't believe me? Check out severancepaycalculator.com. Always good to uh, run it through an example and see how it comes out. Uh, for instance, 55-year-old Victoria was a supervisor in the hospitality industry for four years. The company she worked for was sold. Uh, the new owner said they didn't have a job for her and gave her two weeks' pay. Is she owed any additional severance, or is severance different with the new company? So whenever the company is sold, whenever a business is sold, if you're going along with that sale, in other words, the new company takes you on, on day one, they inherit your service. So that's okay. very, very important. So if on day one, they inherit your service, on day two, if they let you go, well, now they have to pay you your severance based on your total years of service, including the years you had with the previous company. Very important. Now, of course, if you don't accept the job or if you're not even offered a job with a buyer, you have to get your severance. Bottom line is you're not using, uh, losing your seniority. Okay. So what do I tell to people if they're going to accept a job with the buyer? First of all, employment agreements. We talked about that before. If the new buyer offers you an employment agreement to sign, let's be very clear what it says. Because despite what I just said, that they inherit your service, if the employment agreement they want you to sign says they don't inherit your service, they don't inherit it. So you may be giving up years of service by signing an agreement. Very bad idea, absolutely. So to this particular situation, she was let go. The new company didn't seem like they treated her as having her past service. Let's, let's plug her information into yep. the severancepaycalculator.com website to see what she's actually owed. So she is a supervisor. Uh, Victoria is, is four years of service. Remember, the new company inherited her service, and she's 55 and she was offered two weeks pay. Well, of course, Severance Pay Calculator correctly assesses her as being owed easily eight months pay. Depending on her compensation, let's say if she made 68,000, that could be a difference of over $40,000, John. So that's why it's so important to understand how the severancepaycalculator.com website works. And of course, if you are accepting a job with a buyer, remember, be careful with that employment agreement Otherwise, the new company does inherit your service, which is a very good thing. If you're not offered a job, does the new company pay for the severance or the old company have to pay your severance? So if a sale happens and you're not even offered a job by the buyer, you're simply going to be out of a job, then the seller, the company uh, selling the business, has to pay you your full severance. Again, severancepaycalculator.com works just as well for that. EmploymentHourTV.ca is the website. Find a radio show. Tune into that every week. We'd love to have you call in as well. We'll take another call from the show and comment on it right here. A few months ago, uh, after quite a bit of negotiation, it took a month off on a paternity leave. We had a baby. Into that one month, it turned into now five, six months because I ended up going through a medical situation personally, and I can't quite go back on the advice of my doctors. I do want to go back, and we had a brief 
conversation about this, the employer and myself, and he was kind of on the fence on whether or not he had room available to invite me back in his office. What sort of leverage do I have, considering that I left on a paternal leave to begin with? Yeah. yeah careful. A very, very, very good question. So first of all, if he's now unable to work physically for medical reasons, forget about the employer right now, okay? Follow your doctor's advice to get better, to get healthy. Whether that takes another week, another month, another year, okay? Don't worry about your employer. Don't worry about what's going to happen because in the meantime, if you're on a medical leave, you're following your doctor's advice, you continue to be an employee. You continue to accrue seniority. So don't worry about your employer. Deal with your employer when you're ready to come back to work. Now, after whatever time, if you're ready to come back to work, if you feel and your doctor feel that you're able to come back to work, then you're going to approach your employer. Then you're going to tell your employer, I'm ready to come back to work. And at that point, your employer is under a legal obligation to make all reasonable efforts to take you back, to look for a position. If your old position doesn't exist, they have to make all efforts to see if there's another position available to you. If they've tried, they look, they legitimately try to find the position and they cannot, then your employer can terminate with full severance. Okay. If your employer doesn't even try, doesn't uh, care, doesn't want you back, that could be a human rights violation, it could be a violation of the Employment Standards Act, a wrongful dismissal, you name it, it's illegal. So try to get better, follow your doctor's advice, deal with your employer when you're ready to come back to work. And if you don't have a job for whatever reason, you better call me right away. This job, they find you if they find you a different job in the uh, company, same pay, close to, around? If it's a different job, that could be a constructive dismissal. So yes, it should be a very similar job in terms of responsibilities, in terms of compensation, hours of work, days of work. If it's very different, you could say, no, I'm not going to accept that. That is a constructive dismissal, and you're owed your full severance. Coming up here, same job, but half the responsibilities, oh, and pay. We'll, uh, we'll navigate that after a short break. 1-855-821-5900. Employment Hour and 30 continues. Stick around. You were being harassed, and when you said something about it, you're the one who lost your job. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. You've been denied long-term disability. You think you're powerless, but you have a lot more power than you think. I'll tell you a secret. It's a numbers game for the insurance company. They're betting on you walking away from money that they owe you. Don't make that mistake. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savan and his team, 1-855-821-5900, or go to inyourcorner.ca. You thought you had a secure job. You didn't see it coming. Now what do you do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with The Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back to Employment Hour and 30. John Scholes, Lior Sanfiru. It is employmenthourtv.ca. That is where you find the radio show and the calls that come into the radio show, which we take from there, play them back, the interesting ones, the other ones that will expand your mind when it comes to your employment rights, and we play them back right here. Call number th uh, four for the day is coming up right now. I was managing two stores, seven and a half, eight years, and the owner decided, like, just uh, reduce me to one store, and, uh, and he reduced my pay as well, right? He's paying me for one store. He didn't give me enough notice for that, so you, you're going to run only one store. It's interesting because you figured, okay, it's half the responsibilities, which I guess that's good or bad, but it's also half the pay. Yes. So if the company simply said, Good news, we're going to give you less work, but everything stays the same. I guess you wouldn't have anything to complain about. You make the same amount of money, don't have to work as hard, yep. okay. But obviously that's not the case, and it usually isn't. Yeah. If they're going to ask you to do less, they're going to want to pay you less. So if you're now making less money, if your responsibilities and compensation have been reduced, clearly that is not something the company has a right to do. It goes back to what I said earlier, John. The company does not have a right to change the terms of your employment in a significant way. And if they do... Again, the key words, constructive dismissal. So he can accept this, okay? He can say, I'm accepting this, fine. I'll take this reduction in pay. Bad idea, because if you accept it, you give the company the right to do it again. But the other option is to say, I'm not accepting it, and if you're going to do it anyway, employer, I'm going to treat this as a constructive dismissal, and I'm going to get my severance. So how much severance? We talked about the severancepaycalculator.com website. Remember, it works just as well for constructive dismissal. 
So let's, let's show everyone at home how that works with this particular situation. Constructive dismissal, reduction in responsibilities, how much he's owed. So he's a manager with eight years of service. I picked an age, let's say he's in his early 50s, just as an example. Obviously he wasn't given any severance because he wasn't flat out being terminated. But because this is a constructive dismissal, as the severance calculator shows, he could be owed as much as 14 months pay, 14 months pay. So severancepaycalculator.com uh, doesn't just work if you have lost your job and you're having your severance letter in hand. It can work in situations when you're going to force the issue. Right. It's a constructive dismissal. works just as well. Check it out, uh, check it out at severancepaycalculator.com. A place for you to go as well, terminationquestions.com. You can ask your questions there and have it answered uh, very shortly by Lior, a member of his team. Back at the firm, here is one uh, for the day. It says, I worked as an independent contractor through an agency for the past 11 years, handling IT matters for numerous companies. I got a call one day from the agency. They said I no longer had to come into work. That was it. Should they have at least given me my record of employment, my ROE? Yeah, so the real question here is, is this person in the eyes of the law an employee or an independent contractor. So it sounds that he was working through a company, through a placement agency and providing services to various companies. Yep. So he may well have been an employee of this placement company. In fact, not an independent contractor. Remember, a record of employment, he asked us, that's something that's only given to an employee. So from the independent, uh, from the consulting company's uh, standpoint, he's not uh, an employee, sure. he's a contractor. So they're not gonna plan to give him a record of employment. But he actually may be owed it, and in fact, he may be owed severance as well. I would wanna speak to him, I would wanna find out more about, other than the work through this particular company, do you work for others as well? Uh, do you have your uh, own business in the sense that you're paying for your own expenses? Are your expenses covered? Do you have business cards? Whatever it is, because I want to understand if he's an employer or contractor. The key to remember here for everyone is just because you believe you're an independent contractor and you've been providing services on paper as an independent contractor does not make you an independent contractor. If you have a steady job, you're probably an employee irrespective of anything. And in that situation, yes, not only should you be getting a record of employment if you lost your job, the more important thing is you could and should be owed your full severance. Severancepaycalculator.com works just as well for that. And if you do discover that you are an independent contractor, the, the, the tax man could come and knock it, right? Yes, because you've been misclassifying yourself. So you may be getting all kinds of deductions you shouldn't be getting. You've been deducting your mileage, your home office, what have you. In that situation, if you really are an employee, at some point, CRA may audit and say, well, wait a second, you were an employee. You weren't really a contractor, so why were you deducting all those things? Bad idea to misclassify yourself. Bad idea for a company to misclassify you. So you always want to get it right. And if you're not sure what you are or what you should be, call me. Let's talk about it. Uh, you may well be an employee. You say generally, if you are an independent contractor, you know it. You know it. Well, yeah, you know it. If, if you're the plumber, the electrician, right. you're uh, uh, you know, hustling business, you're advertising for customers, you're going from customer to customer to do your job, you're an independent contractor. You know it. You're not wandering there. You're not listening to a show about employment law wondering, does that apply to me? Most people that are misclassified are those people that are only independent contractors on paper, not in real life. They have a steady job. They go to work. They uh, report to someone. Right. They come back the next day and they do it again and again and again. So in those situations, you are an employee. It's substance over form. Ask yourself, do you have a job? If the answer is yes, I have a job, then you're an employee. As opposed to, do I have a business? If you have a business, then you're an independent contractor. So there's a very big distinction there, John, and so many people get it wrong. And when it comes to severance, remember, if you really are an employee, it could be the difference between getting nothing, like an independent contractor would, and getting as much as two years pay. It's a big deal. Just before we go, severance pay calculator. Lost your job, even if you're misclassified as an employee yeah. or an independent contractor or you've been constructively dismissed, severancepaycalculator.com, the very first place you go to, easy to use. Over half a million people have used it. Check it out for yourself. And call 1-855-821-5900. Till next time, Employment Hour at 30. We'll catch you next time. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com.